Hey everyone, what if you could snap together a completely customized power station that would scale infinitely with you over time, all built from a set of modular bricks like a Lego set? Well, a new company called Varia is trying to really rethink what a power station is by coming up with a modular power system that can be mixed and matched in a million different ways. In this video, I'm gonna take a look at this in depth, put it through its paces, and let you know whether this is all hype or really worth getting. The power brick battery module is the center of the system. It's surprisingly small and compact. In fact, it's exactly the same size as a shoebox and only weighs 21 pounds. Inside, there's a 1008 watt hour LFP battery rated at 3000 cycles, and there's high power USB outputs, a built in solar charge controller, and they include a wall charger. So it's essentially a simple power station all by itself. The really interesting thing is you can scale this battery storage infinitely. That's right. You're not locked into a specific number of expansion batteries. You can keep adding battery modules and hot swap them in and out. I'll show you how that works in a minute. The overall design is really attractive with rounded corners and a nice integrated handle on top. It has feet on the bottom and on the front, there's a large display that shows you the state of charge. Above that are a pair of 100 watt USB-C ports and a pair of 18 watt USB-A ports. So you can charge your laptop, phone, tablet, and USB devices like lights and drones and cameras. Around back, there's a 5525 port to connect a solar panel, car charger, or wall charger directly into this unit. There's an integrated 160 watt MPPT solar charge controller, so you can connect one of their 160 watt solar panels, or you can plug in the included 240 watt wall charger that uses GAN technology to run cool and maximize efficiency. Or you can charge it at 60 watts from your car. Now that's the baseline, and each of these can be upgraded massively if you want to. I'll cover that a little bit later. So instead of stressing out about what size power station to buy when starting out, you can start with a power brick and have a solid one kilowatt hour power station that will grow with you. That brings me to the most powerful part of the Varia architecture. There's two additional ports on the back that are both bi-directional, so they can act as a high power input or output port, depending on what you plug in. The smaller VE24 port can accept up to 864 watts of input power or output 864 watts of power, and is usually used for high power solar or wall charger inputs. The larger VE30 port can also accept up to 864 watts of input power but it can output a massive 2,660 watts of power, so it can run a powerful 2,400 watt inverter or high power DC module without breaking a sweat. The VE24 and VE30 ports are the special sauce of this system. Because they can handle so much power, it opens the door for them to roll out new modules over time based on what people want to make the system even more powerful. To handle that much current, you need beefy cables. And Varia has created these super flexible flat cables that I really like. They're offered in three different lengths and they're miles better than the super stiff cables I always complain about on other power stations. They use very heavy gauge wire in a flexible sheath that feels like silicone, so this can bend and fit into tight spaces. Each cable can handle up to 75 amps of power, so they are definitely over-engineered, at least for the modules they have today. Let's use a VE30 cable to connect our first module, the AC brick. To do that, you just stack the inverter module on top, connect it to the power brick with the short VE30 cable, and you'll see the light above the power button turn white. Tapping the power button turns the inverter on and the light will turn green. The cables and hub are low profile and very flexible, so you only need about six or seven inches of space behind the units, which is much better than the 12 to 14 inches you need for most popular power stations to connect to their expansion batteries. This is a monster 2,400 watt pure sine wave inverter that can power anything you can plug into the wall, yet somehow only weighs 8.6 pounds and is the same dimensions as the power brick. The inverter was able to run anything I tested, including high draw appliances like my espresso machine and my chop saw. A single power brick with AC brick is roughly equivalent to a Delta II, 
but the Varia's 2400 watt inverter is much more powerful than the 1800 watt inverter in the EcoFlow. In fact, it's just as powerful as the Delta II Max's inverter, which is super impressive. But to reach that output, you actually need two or more power bricks because pulling 2.4 kilowatts from a one kilowatt hour battery is a very high C rate of 2.5, and that will overheat the battery eventually. In my tests, a single power brick could run a 2400 watt load for 12 minutes, which is still super impressive. Dropping down to a 2000 watt load, it ran for 18 minutes. It can run a 1600 watt load continuously with a single battery, which is pretty much identical to the Delta II. Now, when I was running a 2400 watt load, the battery module and cable was only around 10 degrees hotter than the ambient temperatures, so it stays pretty cool under stress. When I connected two batteries to the inverter, it ran a 2400 watt load flawlessly until both batteries ran out, and it definitely met its rating even in this pre-production unit. The really nice thing is as batteries got warm, it would automatically switch over to the other and then switch back. Fan noise on the inverter was similar to the Delta II Max at 52 decibels at one meter, which is pretty reasonable for such a large output. They'll be adding variable speed fans in their production unit, so smaller loads will run very quietly. Right now, the fans are either on or off. I also did an AC capacity test where I pulled a steady 200 watt load with a single battery and measured the total output. I pulled 960 watt hours of the rated 1008 capacity, which translates to a whopping 95.2%, which is the best I've ever measured in a power station. Now, either they have the most efficient inverter out there or they're derating their battery pack a bit to be conservative, but either way, that's a great result. Now, I kind of skimmed over how I connected two batteries to the inverter. That's where the power hub comes in. This brick has five of the high power VE30 ports to link up to five battery modules together, so they are charged and discharged together. There's a VE30 output port that pushes all of this power to a high power brick like the inverter. On the right, there's a VE24 port that's used to connect multiple wall chargers or solar panels from their respective hubs. All you have to do is connect both batteries with a cable to the link ports and connect the inverter to the output port. Each module communicates through the extra pins on the cables, so it's smart enough to do things like see that the battery is getting hot and seamlessly switch over to a cooler battery to shoulder the load. They sent me five power bricks, so let's hook them all up to the power hub to form a five kilowatt hour system with a 2.4 kilowatt inverter. You can stack these in all sorts of different ways, and they're pretty stable. You're probably wondering how the unlimited expansion works with just five link ports. Well, the way it works is you take the output on one power hub and plug it into the link port on the next hub. So you're essentially chaining up multiple hubs worth of batteries and it will discharge each battery in sequence. It's cool there's no limits and that's because they've kept the system incredibly simple by design. Let's talk about DC outputs. Now, some people will never use the 12 volt outputs on their power stations, but I know how important this feature is for the camper van and overlanding audience to run compressor fridges or even power all their lights, fans, and appliances when wired to a fuse block. Varia wasn't planning on offering DC outputs, but I explained how important this feature was for some people. Now, normally this would just be a hard limitation. It's already been designed and is moving into production, so it's way too late to make changes like this. But the modular nature of this system meant they could design a DC brick in just a few days that turned this from a weakness to a best-in-class feature. The DC brick plugs into the VE24 port on the back of a power brick and has cigarette and a pair of 5121 ports like every other power station. But it also includes a high-power, fully regulated 30-amp Anderson power pole port for 360 watts at 12 volts. If you're looking for an example of the power of this platform, this is it. What do you think would be cool bricks for them to add in the future? Let me know down in the comments. Next, I wanted to test how well this system would perform with solar. And luckily, Varia sent me six of their 160 watt flexible solar panels to test out. Let's plug these in and see how well they perform. This is a 160 watt folding monocrystalline solar panel that comes in a really nice zippered case similar to EcoFlows. It folds into four sections and has a rugged ETFE surface. It is very lightweight at around nine pounds. Each panel includes this beefy aluminum frame that unfolds to become a rigid backbone for the panel to keep it flat. This attaches to the panel with a set of small twist locks at the top. Just push it through the slot and turn it 90 degrees. A pair of kickstand legs pivot out 
to allow you to position it at any angle. These legs work best on grass, pavement, and other grippy surfaces and can slide a bit on a deck. I wish the back support extended a little bit wider because these do flop a bit near the ends, but they told me that they're going to use a heavier duty material that should eliminate that problem. On the side next to the handle is an LED light to tell you if the panel is producing energy and on the side is an Anderson power port. They include a 10 foot cable that has an Anderson on one end and a 5525 on the other. You can connect a panel directly into the back of a power brick since it has a 160 watt solar charge controller built right in. In my test, this charged from zero to 50% on a hazy day and all the way to 70 to 75% on a sunny day. So one panel isn't quite enough to recharge the one kilowatt hour battery by itself, but it's pretty close. So I was curious how much power these panels were actually producing and there's no way to check on screen. So I picked up this adapter on Amazon. This has an XT60 to 5521 and I can plug that into this panel and then plug it into this River 2 Max. So it's high noon right now. And as you can see, I'm getting 135 watts, which is 84% of the 160 watt rating on this panel, which is actually much better than I expected. All right, so it's 835 in the morning and I've set up all six solar panels in my backyard. It's gonna be a super sunny, clear day. And I'm hoping I can charge one, two, or maybe even three batteries with this. This is a 960 watt array. Let's find out how well it performs. So if you want to plug in a single solar panel, you can just plug that right into the back of the power brick. But if you want to do multiple panels like I am today, that's where the solar hub comes in. This has six inputs on the front. So I plug all six solar panels into that. And inside this is an integrated MPPT charger. And on the other end is a VE24 plug that I can plug into the back of the power brick. The solar hub actually has six individual 160 watt MPPT solar charge controllers inside. That means you can plug in different kinds of solar panels with different voltages because each has its own charge controller. This is the VE24 plug. This is coming from the solar hub. You just have to plug that in. So the battery is currently at 0%, but if you see here, the blinking percent sign means that it's getting power. So we're going to let that sit for a little while. We'll check on it later. It is now 1130. It's been going since eight this morning and now it is fully charged just with the early morning light, which is very impressive. So it's the next day and I figured it would might be interesting to try to charge two batteries. So to charge more than two batteries at once, that's where this hub comes in. So this will allow me to plug all of the solar into this input over here and then use these links to connect them to the back through the VE30 connectors. So the first thing we need to do is take the solar from the solar hub, which is this cable here, and we're going to plug it right into the input on our hub. All right, so these are going to get connected in here to each battery. All right, so now we're ready to charge. Now these will be charged in series with the top one first, and once that's full, it'll move on to the bottom one. So checking in at noon, the top battery is at 100%, and the bottom battery is already at 5%, so this thing is moving along. When I checked in later at two o'clock, both batteries were already at 100%. And I really wish I had hooked up a third battery because I think that would have easily charged in a day. Although the panels are great, I know power users wouldn't be happy about being locked into their solar panels and connectors. To address this, they're going to offer a 5525 to MC4 cable. So you can use any flexible folding glass or SIG panel you want, as long as it's within the charge controller specs. So to give this the ultimate test, I'm going to plug this into my LG residential panel. That's 40 volts. So it should be just at the limit for what this charge controller can handle. To connect this, I got this adapter on Amazon that has MC4 on one end and a whole bunch of other connectors. So I can plug this into pretty much anything. All right. So this shows that this can handle even a really large residential solar panel. Now it's definitely not using all the amps that are coming out of this. I believe the solar charge controller can only accept a little under five amps and this is putting out probably closer to eight or nine so we're very over paneled at this point but you can definitely max out the voltage at 40 and it works great for diy folks i talked to them about designing a solar module optimized for large arrays that will handle up to 1000 watts at 150 volts sometime in the future all right let's talk more about charging because there are a lot of options here Varia decided to include a 240 watt DC power supply with every power brick, 
that's a fanless and uses gallium nitride or GAN semiconductor technology, which makes it super efficient and compact compared to a standard charger. I know that means a four hour charge time, but keep in mind that the super fast chargers we've been seeing recently use the inverter in reverse to act as a charger. And the power brick doesn't have an inverter, so we're back to DC power supplies. Since it's included with each power brick, you'll be able to charge all of the batteries simultaneously, or you can use this triple charger hub to sum three wall chargers together and plug that into the VE24 port on the power brick to silently charge it at 720 watts. Or you can plug that into the power hub and have it recharge all the batteries that are linked to it. They also came up with this charger rack, so if you have multiple chargers, this will keep them organized and cool. They're also going to offer this triple charger cable so you can use just one wall plug to power three chargers. You can buy as many chargers as you want to speed up charging even more. If there's enough interest, I bet they could build a much larger supercharger in the future. The same applies to solar. You can plug a solar panel directly into the back of a power brick, or you can sum up to six panels in the solar hub and then plug that into the power brick or the power hub to distribute it to all the batteries. You can also charge this from your car with this cable at 60 watts. If you have multiple batteries, each can be charged in parallel from your car, and maybe they'll even offer an option in the future to charge from your alternator, which would be really cool. Because of this flexibility, you can charge from AC, DC, and solar all at the same time in all sorts of different ways. One source can be plugged into the power hub, and the others can be plugged directly into the ports on the various power brick batteries. Overall, I've been very impressed with the parts of the system I've been able to test so far, even in their pre-production state. So let's talk about pros. First of all, it's very user-friendly and super simple. It's extremely scalable and it has very powerful AC and DC outputs. I really like that you only need to buy what you need and that it's built for longevity, it's future-proof, it's remixable, and it's a really great ecosystem. Let's talk about cons. First of all, the 2400 watt AC inverter actually needs two batteries to reach its full potential. Next, because this doesn't include Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, that means there's no smartphone app control and no firmware updates. But I think by keeping it very simple, that's gonna be less of a problem. It also gives you very limited information about what's going on because the screen just tells you the state of charge and not the power wattage coming in or out. While charging is fairly slow at four hours, but that can be scaled up very easily. The solar wiring and hub means a lot of cables and it's a little tricky to run them into your home. I'll probably end up using the MC4 cables when those come out. And because it's a modular system, there are gonna be lots of pieces to it. Lots of wires and adapters and hubs and things like that. One of the larger cons to me is that this is a Kickstarter project, so nothing is guaranteed and this is a new company. So we don't know anything about how they'll deliver and how good their support will be. If you do wanna back the project, please use my link in the description because it will help the channel and you can save quite a bit of money at launch. Although it's early days, I am very impressed with the vision Varia has created and the modular high power architecture they've baked into the DNA of this product. Being able to grow, evolve, and remix your power station over time with no technical know-how is a really compelling idea that I'm on board for. Let me know what you think of this system in the comments. Would you pick one up at launch? What would you like to see changed or added? I hope this video was helpful to decide whether this is the power station for you. Till next time.